Good evening. Uh, here we have uh, a little bit, something a little bit more modern than what we've been seeing recently. And it's this little dealie here. This is a Sangamo Western um, pressure transducer. Um, so we've got three pin connect to that end. Uh, we've got the pressure inlet at that end. This is a 0 to 60 PSI. It has been used before, as you can see, by the gunge on the bottom there. So it's it's actually been bolted to an airframe. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about, when, when we come to test this, I'll say a bit more about, but I have a feeling that this is US, but it will do as a demonstration. Um, so 0 to 60 PSI. Um, so I would say this is jet engine. Um, Jet engines of the uh, in the 50s, 60s um, used to oil pressures around about 40 psi because, of course, they're all uh, ball and roller bearing engines. Um, there's um, no um, bushes that need a pressure feed, anything like that. So, engines with roll uh, with uh, roller and ball bearings. Um, they're all, it's all on about the amount of flow you can get, not the pressure, the flow. The more, if you like, get it moving, washing the, washing the bearings and away. Whereas with shell bearings, that's what I'm trying to remember, with shell bearings, it's the pressure that actually builds up a microscopic film between the bearing shell and the, um, and the rotating shaft. Yeah? Um, but you need pressure for that. Uh, so you'll see um, uh, uh, internal combustion engines when they're cold. You'll see uh, oil pressures of 75 psi plus. When they're very hot, they'll drop quite considerably to maybe 30 psi or less on an old engine. Then you know it's really worn out. Uh, a good indicator on an internal combustion engine is uh, the state of the bearings is the oil pressure. Uh, if it's really low, especially when it's cold, then yeah, the, the bearings are toast. Whereas in a roller bearing engine, it's all about flow. Uh, roller bearings wear out. You know, I mean, the, they will eventually, I mean, my old Harley now has done 112,000 plus miles. Um, it's an old roller bearing engine, so it'll wear out eventually, but it's the amount of clean oil you've got flash, splashing around those bearings that keeps the longevity, if you like. Anyway, so minor diversion there. Now, we've, we can take this apart to a certain extent. Um, <coughs> oh, another thing. Uh, I found an advert for a similar pressure transducer to this. Um, that's quite old. Hang on, where's my bit of paper? So... Uh, I found an advert with a um, similar to this one, but it's not uh, a bulkhead fitting. It actually clamps straight into. So all you've got is a flange at this end, if you like, uh, and your your gubbins here. Um, you haven't got any of this mounting plate. Now that dates from the 1950s, um, <clears throat> and it's 24 volts. Um, which makes me, this is what makes me think that it's jet engine rather than internal combustion, as well as the pressure range, 0 to 60 psi. So if you're running at 40 psi, then you are bang smack middle of the range. Yeah, and that's where it's just where the needle should sit. Um, now, um, I'll put a picture of that advert up here, by the way, for you to have a, a neb at. Then you can pause it while you look at that. Oh, pardon me just so disgusting anyway quick pause and then we're back onto it right okay so the problem i've got now right i can test this in fact i have already tested it to see what it does i was quite interested um it's a very clever way it does it instead of if you like the switches we did which looked like it was a diaphragm breaking contacts on this one it's a diaphragm that's moving the wiper arm on a rear stat or variable resistor. Yeah. I'll do some photo close-up photography of, of the 
I've got the wrong teeth in again. Either that's why I'm not drinking enough beer. So we'll remedy that in a moment. Anyway, <coughs> what's I going to say? Yes. So the problem I've got with this is because the working bits are, the interesting bits are just here and this plate's in the way. So I'm going to have to remove this mounting plate so that I can get it close to that and get my, I've not got a lot of camera kit here, but I have got one that's reasonably good at macro photography and I can get in there. I can't video macro. So when we come to pressure test it, I'll photograph it at minimum and I'll photograph it at maximum and you can see how, how this thing moves. It's very delicate inside, um, extremely well made. Um, as you would imagine from 1950s uh, uh, electronics. Um, a lot of people think, oh, the valve's big and bulky, but some of it was really tiny, really delicate. I mean, this is, once again, like the meters, this is watchmaker stuff. Um, so I'm going to whip this off now, and um, I'll be back shortly, and we'll see what it's like without this space, and I'll get some photographs taken of... Um, uh, of the uh, of the wiper in various positions and then we can go and test it so stay with me i'll be back shortly right so i've got the base off this now yeah so we can actually see in there i don't know how close you're going to be able to get to see uh, let me find a little pointy thing you find something to point with there we go this could possibly do so if we look in here you can see the brown thing that runs from end to end, right? That's the uh, resistor itself, okay? Um, and then you've got the silver thing here that's at an angle, yeah? The bit that's at an angle. That is the wiper. And it's attached. You can't see it. I'll take some photographs and put them up. Uh, but it's actually attached in there to the diaphragm. So there's obviously a sprung diaphragm in there or a, a piston on a, on a calibrated spring or something like that. Um, and that piston connects to that, if you like, uh, let's get this back around the right way. There we go, you can see it again now. It connects to the angular wiper. And it doesn't wipe it. It actually moves it up or down. So with the angle, yeah, so you can see... Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see. It shows up on the meter quite nicely, um, and it's a current sensing device. Uh, we're not looking for voltage here; we're looking for current. Uh, it's current sensing, and uh, so yeah, and it moves it up, and down as the pressure goes. So when there's no pressure, it wipes it here, and when it's maximum, it wipes it there. So it's a good really neat it really is i'll put some photographs up anyway because uh yeah me standing here spouting and pointing with this just doesn't do it justice it really doesn't um yeah so what we're going to do is um i'm going to take some photographs uh not quite sure how we're going to do the macro while it's at maximum might have to fiddle around with me bench settings so you this is going to be a bit of a fiddle, this video, because I'm going to have to um, video this being tested and I'm going to have to photograph it in various stages of being tested, looking at the looking at the wipers. So it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a fiddle, but we'll do it. So what we'll do now is um, I'll put that down there. Um, and uh, and I think uh we'll move the camera around uh, and i'll set everything up and we'll give it a go and see how we go now this uh, is possibly going to be a two-parter i would imagine because it might be a bit long might not be um but yeah we'll see how we go um i'm not going to be sure how long this takes um but uh, there's not a lot to do it's just bloody awkward doing it because it, this is so piddly and um, whereas everything else we've looked at has been fairly beefy. This this is quite uh, a genteel little instrument, which once again makes me think jet engines, because reciprocating engines vibrate like Greek buggery. 
but um, uh, jet engines, jet engines, uh, turbine engines, gas generators, call them what you will. There's various people call them by various names. I call them jet engines. Um, uh, you know, the Hawker City, um, the um, Olympus, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they don't vibrate. They really don't. They're just so finely balanced. Um, so that makes, and, and although it was on rubber mounts, that would have been to take any aircraft, any shock with the aircraft movement rather than engine vibration. Because by the looks of it, that was because, let me just grab it. <clears throat> uh, because this yellow coat in here, um, which is uh, known in the business as Gorilla Snot, um, is used uh, where you've got dissimilar metals. Yeah. Or where you're mounting metal, bare metal against bare metal. So you'd put that on and it stops any electrolytic corrosion happening. Uh, so this would have been bolted to the airframe. I've been bolted to the engine. You wouldn't have seen that because you don't do that. Um, and it's also, you can see where there's possibly been a plate on here that's come off. Um, so this has been used before. It's come off an aircraft. Um, it has a hair attached in the gorilla snot. Um, and it was applied quite poorly. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, this is a used thing, uh, and I would imagine it was taken off because it was US, um, unserviceable. Okay. So but so yeah, so I'll explain why. Well, well, why it's unserviceable when we test it, and uh, but it still indicates. It'll still show us um, how it works and what it does. Um, it's not 100%, but uh, I think it's good enough for demonstration purposes. Let me say that, demonstration purposes. This won't be going back onto an aircraft, okay? Unless someone's repaired it, and I know, know, know of nobody who repairs these. So, um, yeah, so these are a, a one-shot throwaway item. Stupidly reliable, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I will now uh, turn this off. I will now turn everything around and um, yeah, it's boilingly hot out there tonight. I mean, it's what's quarter to, well, it's quarter to 10, judging by the watch, up, judging by the clock up there. And I've closed the door to keep the insects out, but oh, man, is it hot tonight. Mmm. That is just so good. So, yes, catch you in a few minutes or in the next episode or whenever. Stick with me. Thanks for watching.